I've had a few people ask me to do a video showing how you could put a watermarked logo on your image. Most of my two minute videos are about PixInsight, but I don't yet know how to do this in PixInsight. There is an alpha channel and it seems like I could take two images and blend them using it, but at this point in time I haven't figured out how to do that to create a watermarked logo. If somebody else has figured this out and they want to let me know, I'll be happy to follow up. So for right now, when I do this, I'm using Photoshop as the tool of choice. Just to show an example of the kind of watermarking I'm talking about, this is my image of NGC 281, the Pac-Man Nebula. And when I put a watermarked logo on the image, I tend to use this watermark. I put it down in the corner of the image. It's not bright white. I reduce the opacity a bit. Then I often will put a text string over here, which briefly describes what you're looking at in the image. So if you want to put a watermarked logo on your image, first you have to have a logo. Let's talk about that for a moment. The best logos for watermarking astrophotos is one that has a single color white design where the foreground is pure white and the background is transparent. This is important because you want to be able to see your image in the background, not some arbitrary fill color. To do this, you must have a design file that supports a transparent background such as a PGN or an SVG file. There are other files that would probably support that as well, but those are the two most common. You have to make sure that you have a logo and you have to have it in the right file format supporting the transparent background. But what if you don't have a logo and you want one? Well, you can design your own, or if you have a friend with some artistic talents, you can always bring them in and ask them to help. Or you could try using an online service, such as Fiverr.com or DesignCrowd. First, let's take a look at Fiverr. Fiverr allows you to shop for a gig-based artist, and you can engage them to create a logo for you. This is likely to cost somewhere between $20 and $30. To get someone that has a good track record and an impressive portfolio of work, that might cost you a little bit more. I know I engaged a couple of designers to create a video intro and outro for my YouTube videos. This cost me about $30, and I was very satisfied with both the result and the experience. When I wanted a logo, I was contemplating making a website, and I knew I'd be promoting this website by using social media. So I needed a logo design that had a color version for website and social media banner use, had a black and white version for watermark use, had icons and thumbnails of various sizes for several uses, and finally had a favicon. What's a favicon? When I started this, I had no idea. It turns out to be a very tiny logo that is shown on a browser tab for the website you're currently visiting. I really had no idea what kind of logo I was looking for, so I decided to spend a little bit more and I created a Design Crowd competition. And this is a special feature of Design Crowd, which was really quite a bit of fun. This cost me about $200. I could have done it for a lot cheaper, but I wanted to do the competition and I wanted to go through the experience. And I found that this indeed was really a fun experience. Let's look at this just a bit. The first step is to create a product brief. And in the product brief, you describe what you are doing, what you want, what you don't want. You can even pick colors, basic logo styles, favorite fonts. You can even dial in an emotional feel that you want to get from the logo. I described what astrophotography was, the use I had in mind for the logo, and I even included a sampling of my astro images, a picture of my telescope, and even a crude initial logo I had thought of. The idea here was to inform and to help inspire them. Once complete, Design Crowd pushes it to their vast worldwide network of gig artists and they begin to create designs and submit them to you. After a couple of days, I ended up getting over 165 designs created by people from all over the world. I'll just scroll through the beginning list of them so you get a feel for what the submissions look like. I had about 33 different designers creating 165 designs, and now it was up to me to go through those designs and figure out which ones I like best. I then created an email list of friends and family, and after choosing what I thought were the 10 best choices, Design Crowd allowed me to send them a poll where they could vote on their favorites and offer comments on it. This narrowed the list down to about three, and then I worked with those three top designers with a few iterations to improve the designs and make them a little bit more suitable for what I wanted. Finally, I picked a winner. They got paid, and I got all of the artistic assets for the logo. And this is the winning entry. This was the main logo, main color logo, 
And then there are versions of the logo as it might be used on an all white or all black. And as it turns out, this all white design here is what I'm going to be using for the watermark on my images. The final logo came out looking like this, and I've been using it ever since. And if you ever wonder what my final favicon looked like, that was the final design we ended up with. All in all, I found that the experience was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed interacting with the designers. I was very happy with the final design. And if you ever want to consider doing something like this on your own, I would highly encourage it. So there's a few different ways that you can go about getting your logo. Once you have your logo, what do you do with it? Well, the first step in Photoshop is you open up the image that has no logo that you want to add it to. And so we'll go back to my Pac-Man Nebula image. Next thing I want to do is bring the logo into the image. And to do that, I'm going to go to the File menu, and I'm going to look for Place Embedded. And once I do that, I'm going to choose PNG file for the logo, and a version is now plopped into the middle of the screen. And at this point, I can move it around, and I can scale it by dragging diagonally. I'm going to get it to about the scale that I want. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to add something to that. To the bottom of this, I'd like to add some text, which also has the copyright information. So in order to do that, I'm going to choose the T command, the text command. I'm going to create a string here. Um, I'm going to change the font size so we can see what we're dealing with. I'm going to select all the text and I'm going to paste in the string I want to have here, which is Astrophotography by Patrick A. Cosgrove with a copyright. At this point, I'm going to bring this down underneath here, and I'd like those to line up. And obviously this font size is not going to work for that. So I'm going to choose the text, and I'm going to go up here and change the font size. And let's try bringing it down to say 24. Nope, that's still a little bit long. Let's bring it down to 18. Okay, 18 point font makes that string still a little bit too long, so I'm going to drop this down a little bit more. And we'll bring it down to 16 point, at which point it looks like we're matching up pretty well. Now we can put these in the position where I really want them. And if I want to fine tune it, while something is selected in the, in the uh, layer here, I can use the arrow keys to move things down. So I'm hitting the down arrow right now, and I'm bringing the main logo down to the text. And that's looking pretty good. Next thing I want to do is adjust the opacity. Now, typically what I'd like to do is keep the text at full brightness, so that's 100% opacity. But I think the logo, I'd like to make that a little bit fainter. So I'm going to drop that down to maybe, say, 75, so it's not quite as bright. And that's looking pretty good to me, so I'm pretty happy with that part. Now, what if I wanted to add in a title for the image or a label describing what's going on here? Well, it's very easy for me to come back here and choose another text string. We'll make this bigger, 36. We'll bring this up to 48. All right, now we select the text that's in there and paste in what we want, which in this case is NGC 281, the Pac-Man Nebula. And now we can move that to where we'd like it to be. Once that's lined up where we like, when I choose on that particular layer, I still have the option to play with the opacity. So I may want to bring that down a little bit as well. So it's not quite as bold, 75. At this point, I now have the watermark that I wanted. I have a label on the image. I have them in several layers. I can export this image as a JPEG, and I'll have my image, and I'll have the watermarked information. If I wanted to have a clean version of the image, I can just turn off those elements, and I'm back to the original image, and I can export that. So it gives me quite a bit of flexibility. Now, the interesting thing is, once I get it right for one image, and I'm happy with that one image, then I can come in here and select these layers, I can do a copy, go to a new image, and paste those layers right in, and I have a good starting point. All I need to do is edit the text for the name, and I have what I need. So hopefully this will get you started with creating and using watermarked logos.